Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to learn and explore some tips from InDesign every architect and designer must know. This is going to be a good one. We will be discussing about techniques that will make your workflow faster and organized. So stay tuned. Directly linking your Adobe assets. Using this method, you can insert your assets, diagrams and images from other Adobe programs like Illustrator or Photoshop in a better and organized way without actually exporting them out as JPEGs, PDFs, etc. So you can see that over here, I have set up an InDesign sheet with just some basic text options. And in Illustrator, I have set up three sheets that I want to bring into InDesign, three diagrams. So we go back to InDesign, go to File and click Place or you can choose the con option Ctrl D. Click the file and make sure that Show Import Options over here at the bottom is checked. Then when you, when you open the file, you see that it gives you an option to choose between which uh, artboard that you want to import. Click the one that you need and bring it into the InDesign file. Once it's into the file, just uh, scale and uh, resize the uh, a diagram in the way you want. Once that's set up, just copy each of the diagrams so that the, uh, the size is consistent. Now click the second one again, click Ctrl D, make sure the option is checked, and go to the second artboard and click OK. Similarly, for the third one as well. This way, you can directly link stuff from your illustrator file into the InDesign without actually exporting them out. Now let's see how it's done with Photoshop files. So over here in Photoshop I've just set a base, base image with some layers and shapes. Now once we go back to InDesign and click Ctrl D and click the Photoshop file and make sure that show import options checked. It actually gives us options to switch on and off different layers that we have created in Photoshop directly in InDesign with a preview on the left side. So we can choose whatever we need in the layer options and bring our file in. In this way we can directly work with uh, Adobe products like Illustrator and Photoshop without actually exporting them out as JPEGs and PDFs. This way they save automatically when once you save them in the other program. Inserting page numbers and overriding master sheets. Here we see how we can create page numbers and even delete them on some sheets even if it's set on the master layout. Let's see how it's done. So here you can see that I've set up a couple of pages from my InDesign file. Now we go to the master page to set up our page number. So we create a text box and insert a text, any text of your choice and set up the style of page numbering that you want on your sheet. Now once that is set up, you select the text inside the box, go to type, go to insert special character markers current page number. This tells the program that that text box that you put is for the page number. Now we copy that uh, the text box and the line onto the other side to create the page number on the other sheet according to your page layout. Now once it is, this is set up. You can go back to your pages and you will see that the page numbers have automatically been set up on the sheets. Now all sheets have page numbers. Now there may be certain sheets that you don't need the page numbers or they are coming in the way of your composition. So if you click shift, control and select your text box and the line from your master sheet, you can see that you can manually delete them only on that specific sheet. Spell checking and color tagging pages. This is a technique to proofread and organize your sheets in InDesign. So over here you can see I have a couple of pages set up in my InDesign file and I have a text box over here. Just to spell check it, click Ctrl I to open up the check spelling option. And over here you can see the different words with spelling mistakes and the correction options. And you can choose and change them accordingly. Now let's go into the color tagging of pages. So when once you have multiple sheets in your design, to organize them effectively, you can put colors on different color tags on different sheets. 
by going to selecting the sheet, going to page attributes, color label and se selecting the color. So according to the different uh, typings and on your sheet, on your layouts, you can, you can tag them differently to organize them better. Using placeholders and compound paths for improving your composition in your sheets. Now in InDesign over here, you can see that I've set up some sheets. Now going to the rectangular frame tool, we can set up different placeholders using this tool. So here I'm just going to copy different squares as placeholders, just to, to show you a style of composition. Now they snap equally into place uh, using the smart guide in InDesign. I've just created three rows. Now you can individually put images in each one of them, or there's an option to select all of them and insert one image by going into object path and making a compound path by selecting all of it. And now, if you place an image or a Photoshop file into this placeholder you see that a single image is kind of distributed in, in between all the placeholders now if you fit it into the frame proportionally and adjust the image to whatever it means you see that you have a different style of composition by using this technique using the eyedropper to copy text properties on the image so to copy text properties from, from one text box to the other Click I to activate the eyedropper tool. Then Alt click the text that you want to copy the properties from. And then select and drag it onto the text that you want to copy it to. So this is an easier way to select and change text properties rather than manually going and selecting the font that you need. This will copy the size and the font properties as well. Checking file errors and correcting them easily using the pre-flight tab. So we have uh, once you have set up all the text and images in the InDesign file, you can either go to the bottom of, of the InDesign file or go to Windows, Output and Pre-flight. This shows the different errors that are there in the file like missing links or overset text and which page number it's placed on. So for example, if you just go to the old text, or set text option and double click on that, it will directly take you where to the, the place where the error is and you can manually adjust it. Similarly, you can even relink your Photoshop file back. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if this video helped you and more videos coming soon.